theology of the human person that they're trying to communicate. What they reveal to us is our heavenly destiny. Each of us is made by God to be with him in heaven and to see him face to face. And what icons are trying to communicate to us is that sense of the heavenly, as best we're able to perceive it here on earth. Now, of course, we know icons as very much part of the Eastern tradition of the church, and this is true. We're in the Museum of Russian icons, uh, and most of the icons that we see around us and we'll see in this show uh, come from the Russian Orthodox Church. But in fact, iconography is as much part of the Western Catholic tradition as it is the Eastern. Of course, we mustn't forget that there are Eastern Rite Catholics who very, very strongly retain the use of iconography in their liturgy. So, what what is an icon? As I said, an icon is uh, the art of heaven. It has behind it a theological understanding of what heaven is like. And historically, all Christian art, up to about 1200, east and west, was consistent with the iconographic prototype. Uh, and this includes in the West Celtic art. If you read a, a history of art book, you'll see later forms of art in the first thousand years of the church, as called Ottonian or Carolingian. Um, and then also, perhaps a little bit more well known, the Romanesque. Each of these are very distinctive and Western, but nevertheless, they are consistent with the iconographic prototype. And so, what we're going to do in this show is discuss the elements which are common to all these iconographic traditions. Each of the, the national churches of the East tends to have their own distinctive tradition. So we will be looking at Russian icons, but the Greek churches have their own tradition as well. But there are common elements which we see in all of them. Now, the model for the, our understanding of what mankind is like in heaven, what man looks like in heaven, as we're trying to portray in the icon, perhaps the first place to look would be the transfiguration. And if we look at an icon of the transfiguration, then what we see is Christ, as described, particularly in St. Luke, of course, as moving, going onto the mountain with the three apostles, and then appearing transfigured, shining with light, and flanked by the two prophets, and even his clothes were transfigured, they were changed. Now, this is seen historically as a, an, an anticipation of what the beatific vision will be like. And the, the key thing, I think, there are a number of elements which will be derived from that, which we'll see in the, the icons, which come from our understanding of the heavenly realm. But the key thing, I think, to mention first is that sense of light. And... Uh, of course, if we look at an icon of the Transfiguration, you see this light coming out of Christ. Christ is the largest figure, is the most important. But also, just some very simple things that we can see initially. There is no cast shadow. If we looked at a, a later painting in the West by Caravaggio, for example, who painted around 1600, uh, you see very deep, deeply set shadow. He's trying to show mankind on earth with the potential for sanctity but not in heaven yet. Uh, in the icon, they're showing the heavenly dimension, and so each saint is shining with light, and there is no cast shadow. Now we can see this just in this very simple icon. This is the first one that we're looking at. This was painted in 1450, the, one of the classic period of Russian iconography. Very simple, very sharp lines. And the things to notice, of course, is that, that it looks flat, Heaven is outside time and it's outside space. It's drawn with line, very simply, and almost coloured in. And the halo, this would have been gold in the original, um, it's not simply an abstract symbol. It's actually showing the aura of light, the golden, uncreated light of heaven coming out of the saint. So it has its root in the depiction of something real. And we're going to spend the rest of the show looking at these icons and discussing primarily the, the form, the features of the icon, rather than the content that make it the art of heaven, the visual vocabulary that is used 
by iconographers. The icons, the indigenous, the truth of who you are. You know, you're the only people that can wake up. That can literally wake up and you're waking up just, you know, really just uh, ruffles everybody's feathers. You waking up is ruffling everybody's feelings. Because everyone else can claim to be whatever they say. Chinese, Japanese, uh, 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 Swede. <laughs> and all this stuff and no one questions them. Okay, yeah, you're the Swede. Okay, you're the German. Alright, you're the French. Alright, you're the American. Alright, you're the Native American. And they're all working against the icon, against the drop. Oh, we're going to get the drop. We're going to get the drop. They're working against the drop, man. And what's the drop? Most of the icons at the museum here and the ones that we've been discussing so far are very old, part of the, the ancient tradition of Russian iconography. This is Russian iconography. And all you've been seeing is copper color, copper tone, Nagas, Negroes, Afros, and all kind of things. All the angels got froze. And all you've seen coming out of Russia is melanated, angelic, <laughs> high vibrational beings who they want to call niggas today. The Negush, the king of kings. The Rex. Everybody's burning these. I mean, this is just a fraction of what was saved out of Russia because they started just burning all of these type of paintings. All the ones like you just seen. Oh, man, I mean. You know, what was they just showing us, man? So all these, you know, started getting burned down. All these regal, we're talking priest kings, man. All of the high order, the high order, the council, they're all melanated. This is in Russia, man. So when you confuse about this Russia and the Rus and why the Rus or the Russians look like this, look like you, you're confused about the, the Rus Tao. The way, the cross, the crossing, the sign, the signal, the monument. Well, this monument has everything to do with the one that is passing the message. Your priest king. We're talking the roots. We're talking the root shins. We're talking the roots. We're talking the root shins. We're talking the lost tribes of Israel identity. The Lost Tribes of Israel, surnames, right? The Rus. So when we digging on these Russian icons, and you know, don't even trip, fall back, man. We're going we're gonna to look at this, uh, uh, you know, Hijack City, man. We're going to go to Hijack City. We're going to look at uh, a quick clip of uh, Bill Maher, you know what I mean? You know, having something to say about the probability that these so-called African Americans in America are bloodline descendants of the tribes of Israel, Yashara, right? So, you know, that 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 they're the Hebrews, that they're Hebrews. He's, he's gonna mock it 
And it's crazy how you can mock stuff when so much evidence is around, but I guess they don't, you know, count on the audience doing the research, right? So most people just going to laugh at it. He's going to say, yeah, right. That's him. <laughs> you don't hear what he has to say. It's just so smug. I just want to see his smug because you already know who's running the show and why he's saying what he's saying, even though he got to know the truth that it's all about you. The Rus in Russia. It's all about Israel. It's all about Mazaka, right? Constantinople, right? Mossad, the founder, right? I mean, it got to be all about you is all I'm saying. It got to be all about you. When you're seeing these depictions of, of your prophets, man. You got the wings, and these are all just little little Afro people, and, and the angels got the froze too. All these wing situations. How can you deny these people their rightful place, and and say it was such a schmug and deny these people their heritage when it's on the walls, man? Look, man, look, man. This is easy work. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the climate and the eradication of these people, of these copper-colored Nagas after the Papu Bull Doom Diverse is 1452. The exiled, you know what I'm saying, Hebrews being exiled out of Spain at the same time as they're being exiled out their own land or put in captivity on their own land in 1492 in Spain and America simultaneously. This was war against these people, man. man this is war against you, Naga. You, Naga. You, Naga. These are paintings. Most of these are paintings, man, right in the catacombs, man, right in, in Russia. These are the frescoes. There's a very expensive book called The Russian Icons. Dig on it. Just uh, put it in YouTube. You know what I'm saying? You got brothers doing drops on that. Because it's always been about you. It's always been about you, man. It's always been about who? Oh, man. Negro land, man. It's been about Negro land, man. Hold up, man. I may love to uh, make sure I give his brother a shout out, man. Love to true Hebrews, man. Man, you know, I just want you to know it's about you. We're just talking St. Moses, the black. Remember we uh, dug on Moses the black with Templar Urban Reed? All right, man, so as we watch this clip, You know, I'm going to make sure I get my copyright thing up, man, because I don't want no, you know, fair use. First of all, fair use. We're doing this for educational scholarship purposes, teachings and criticisms and stuff like that. All right. Straight up, man. Because we're just talking David, man. We're just talking Mazaka. Mossack, the founder. We're just talking David, right? Because, you know, Ezekiel 37, 24, David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall also walk in the judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Then they shall dwell in the land that I give in to Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwell, and they shall dwell there. They, their children, their children's children forever, and my servant David shall be prince forever. I will establish one shepherd over them, and he shall feed my flock, my servant David. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. This is in Ezekiel. I, Wah, will be their 
power, their creator, their power, and my servant David, a prince among them, I, Hawa, have spoken. So over and over here, you know, Hosea 3 and 5, For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king or prince, without sacrifice, sacred pillar, effort, teraphim. Afterward, the children of Israel shall return, seek their creator, and David, and David, and David, man. Man, you know. Hold on, man. And David, man. Now, of course, man, we know that priest, king, king, David, you know, we've, we've asked the question, did a black man discover the fountain of you? Uh, press the wine, I mean, you know, look out for Preston John 40. I'm just, I'm just covering a couple, you know, boundary lines, you know what I'm saying, to make sure the road is clear as we track through the investigation, because we are investigating, we are seeking the children of Israel will abide many days without a king or prince, but then they're going to return to Hawa, our creator, and seek who? Hawa, our creator, and David, their king. We're talking about the latter days, man. You will seek Hawa, right? They say, God, we're talking about our breadth of security, and, and David, their king. So that's why we dig on the fantasy, the, the fantastic, the, the mythology, the foundational legend of the priest king Preston John, when we know that it's rooted all throughout this so-called Tartarian situation, all throughout the Byzantine, all throughout the Middle Ages, Medieval Ages, Dark Ages, Copper Color, Naga, you know what I'm saying, Golden Age for you, right? That was your Golden Age, man. But it wasn't that long ago that a black man discovered the fountain of you. Because we know this is a brother. We know it's a brother. And as everybody who's investigating Preston John, they all know we're talking about a brother. A priest king, an Israelite priest king, a who? A King David. A who? Hold up, man. We're just talking one thing. Where's my dog? Woo. Right here. Yeah, man. We're just talking about the true depiction of Israel, man. Love to illustrious divinity. All right. True depiction of Israel. King David. So this is another depiction of King David to match this depiction of King David. But could these, could these Negroes in America have some relation? Well, then now you have to tie them into the indigenous American. Uh-oh. Oh. Right, right, right. We're just talking about the American. The aboriginals. Or the copper-colored races that were just found here by the European. Just found here. Who? The copper color races. Who? David's people. Who? Preston John's people. Found of youth, right? We're just talking about, you know, this mythical fountain, the fountain of youth. While most of us associate the fountain of perpetual youth with the new world, right? The new world, right? The new world, right? Especially Florida. That has only been the case for the last 500 years. So they were looking for it everywhere else. And then suddenly within the last 500 years, the rumors pop out everywhere about this fountain of youth located somewhere in the new world, especially Florida. You remember how big the territory of Florida actually is, not the current map, right? And we're talking about a black man. <laughs> Who's over this fountain of youth. So the priest king plays man. The priest king plays. And the priest king is. Is. Literally. King David. Now you got to adjust your timeline. See. 
Because the priest king they were looking for is Dawood. And I know they say Dawood is gone. He's gone. He's gone. He couldn't have the fountain of youth. Well then, how do you think? I mean, you know, how do you think? The Mosai says to Ezekiel, the prophet, talking about the what? Latter days, that I will establish one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, my servant David. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, Hawa, will be their power. And my servant David, a prince among them, and I, Hawa, have spoken. My servant David, a prince, a Khan. David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they shall have, all have one shepherd. All right, we're talking about forever, Prince forever, Khan forever. You're searching for your creator, Hawa and David. Why? Because he's hiding in the timelines. In the dark ages, middle ages, it's popping it out. And if you're not looking through it, if you're not searching through and deciphering through at least an investigation of all these priest kings, all these prestors, Hijack or not, you're going to have to cipher through them, see who's who's connected, who's lining up. Because when you talk Preston John, you're talking Roger and Roger Chola II, Jadaron, Emperor of Soli, Preston John Pandion. Look out for Preston John, number 40. Yeah, we're on part 40 on YouTube. We're going to get to 50, man. A let go. Because when you talk Roger and Roger Chola II, you're talking Preston John. Who is Preston John? All right, man. I mean, it just plays because, again, we're talking about the climate changing. The climate, the climate change when you were attacked. We're talking about a fountain of youth over here near Florida, especially Florida. We're talking about tribes taking baths in the fountain of youth. To account for Preston John's age and work around it, Robert Silverberg writes in his 1972 book, The Realm of Preston John, Love to Tie Battle, who's, I believe she's kicking this one right here, The Realm of Preston John, uh, every uh, every Wednesday, 6 o'clock Pacific, you know, 432thedrop.com, man, go check out In Battle Time. So The Realm of Preston John, that the legend of the fountain of youth in Ethiopia was blended. So now, so they went from that, e that Ethiopia to what, Florida? To this Ethiopia? Remember what, what uh, Ronald Sanders says in Lost Tribes, right? Here's the version transcribed from a slightly latter manuscript of Silverberg's book, talking about the fountain of youth. He's translating. All right, let's go. Whoever drinks of its water three times without having eaten will have no illness for 30 years. And when he has drunk of it, he will feel as if he has eaten the finest meats and spices by drinking this water. For it is full of Hawa's grace. A person who bathes in this fountain, whether he be of a hundred or a thousand years old, man. Yeah, man. I mean, unless you don't believe all those biblical, you know, ages on them early, on the early ancestors, man. All right? How, how, what, 600 years, 800 years, 900 years. Yeah, so whether you a hundred or a thousand. So all this is biblical. You will regain the age of 32. No, so you take this bath. That this is the definition of baptism. This is the OG, without the Christianized X, Y, and Z. It wasn't getting dunked in some pool of water. It was getting dunked in the fountain of youth. Then they made an abstraction and made it a religion, but it was all about the fountain of youth. If you have no living water, you have no baptism, because you ain't gonna turn back to the age of thirty-two, whether you be a hundred or a thousand. Know that we were born and blessed in the womb of our mother 562 years ago. I got you, man. I got you, man. We on your ass, Preston John. You know, I, I, you know, I'm just over here just, just grooving because, you know, how do you respond to somebody like Bill Moore? Bill Moore, Bill Moore. See how they play the words? But that's like the Cohens, right? That's like the Cohens and the Cons. That 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 that's like the Cohens and the Cons, man. Hold up, man.
<laughs> That's like them saying we Cohen's, but they're just saying Khan. They just started talking about a priesthood. We're just talking about a priesthood, man. So, what are you talking, Cohen or Khan or Bill Muir or Bill Moore? Just know that it's already on the walls. It's already on the walls when you're looking in between the timeline. They took how many baths? We were born and blessed in the womb of our mother 562 years ago. And this, since then, we have taken, we have bathed in the fountain six times, man. So when you're digging on the fountain of you, and you're trying to understand why the Most High is saying, David, my servant, shall be king over them, even though you're thinking he lived all this time ago. And you adjust your timeline and you realize that this Prester John, this priest king, all this all this is happening around the what, 1100s, 1200s. But it doesn't even matter. You could push it back further than that because he's taking how many baths when you talk David? Six times, man, six baths, and each time they turn back to the age of 32. And they haven't stopped searching for this fountain of youth. We're just talking about the account for, to account for Preston John's age, since we know he's going to be shepherd forever, right? My servant David shall be their prince forever. One shepherd, right? So now you don't have room, room for... For the phantom or the duplicate of this so-called JC, you don't got room for it. All you can do is tie in and see how they weaved in your Joshua masterfully. They, they weaved in Preston John masterfully. David masterfully. Elijah masterfully. They weaved it in because they had to give you some truth in the midst of all that shit. But there's only one shepherd. How many baths has he taken in the fountain of you, man? When we talk David, man, I'm saying when we talk David, man, I'm saying, man, when we talk David, man, I'm saying David, man, I'm saying David, man, I'm saying Raja and Raja Chola, or who? Prester John the Pandian, man. Father of who? Solomon? Hmm. Hmm. I mean, sometimes you got to look around in Genie. Cause now you're in what? 1135, 1195. The biblical history they pushed back in time only happened in this medieval time period. Remember what Anatoly for the Make was said? Most of the real history is happening after the 900s and they're putting phantoms and duplicates, pushing it back, changing the names, the titles of, of the kings, putting the different locations. Scalic Batavius is going crazy. But why is this the dark ages? Because it's blacked out. Oh, it's blacked out, man. I'm talking David. <laughs> it's blacked out, man. Why, man? Because it's blacked out, man. My sister, it's blacked out, man. It's blacked out, man. You know the Black Madonna. You met before. You met her before. It's blacked out, man. Where you want to go? It's blacked out, man. Look, man, we're just talking Constantinople. We're just talking Khazari. We're just talking the Meshechs, right? Remember in the antiquities of the Jews and Josephus, and he slipped in this Meshechs, and he says, there's going to be a mark. There's going to be a sign over these people. There's going to be a mark or a sign. Uh, uh, oh, uh, oh, I still got some Josephus up. Oh, man, this is great. Josephus, man, this is the uh, book one, chapter six. How every nation was denominated from the first inhabitants. Now they were the grandchildren of Noah and honor whose names were imposed on nations 
by those that first seized upon them. Japheth, the son of Noah, had seven sons. They inhabited so of that beginning at the mountains, Taurus and Amanus. They proceeded along Asia as far as the rivers Tanaeus and along Europe to Cadiz. To Cadiz, right, settling themselves on lands they light lands they light upon, which none had inhabited before. They called the nations by their own names, for Gomer founded those whom the Greeks now call Galatians, the Gauls, right, but were then called Gomer, right? So the Galatians were to Gomer. So when you're reading Galatians in the New Test, that's all about the Gomerites. May God founded those that from him were named Magogites, but who are by the Greeks called Scythians. Right? Now, as to Javan and Madai, the sons of Japheth, from Madai came the Medeans, who were called the Medes by the Greeks, but Javan, Jonia, and all the Grecians are derived. Tobel founded the Tobilites, which are now called the Iberians, like the Iberians, right? Like the Ebers, right? So that's that's an interesting one right there. And Mosochini, Mosochini were founded by Mosa. Now, if you notice, they're just throwing this in because all this other stuff was connected. Javan, Javan, Jonia, and all the Grecians are derived. Thobel founded the Thobelites, which are now called Eberes, and then Mosachini, Mosak, Mosakini, Mosak, Moses, Mosak. So this is just being thrown in. It's not really being called a son of no one. And it's just say, look, Mosakini founded by Mosak. Now they're called the Cappadocians. Kappa Cappadocians. We're going to start digging in OSB on that Capilia drop. How the Capilia, which is all connected with this Moshe as well. You got Capilia, Moshe. I mean, we're going to dig on all this stuff, man. Relax. We got work to do. We on a war path, man. We, it's a frequency war, man. Because you're just talking about Mosat. They are now the Cappadocians. And look, here's the hint that got us. This is what really kicked off a lot of the investigation right here. Right from Josephus. So if you want some, find out where the inspiration lies. A lot of it lies right here in this couple lines. There is now, there is also a mark. He got the mark. He got the mark. He got the mark. Maybe Revelations calls this the mark of the beast. Because the only time we're even talking about a mark of the beast is when we're in the mind of a hijack or the New Testament. We don't talk about the mark of the beast in the Tanakh. Maybe they're going to get a mark. They got a mark. The mark we're talking about, the towel we're talking about, there is also a mark on their ancient denomination still to be showed. So he's just giving you a little hint, man, that these Mosaks, these tribes of Moses, these Mosaks, because Moses or Mosak founded the Mosakini, right? Tribes, these tri these these Mazakas, right? These Mashikas, check it out. There's also a mark on their ancient denomination still to be shown. For there is even now among them a city called Mazaka, which may inform those that are able to understand. What is Josephus talking about, man? I mean, you just you blew through every everything else. Uh, the Greeks are the Scythians, the Medes, uh, from the Medeans, uh, the Javan, Jonia from the Greeks, and the Greeks are here. And then he got to, he got to Mosak and went crazy. He got to Mosak and just had to let loose like he was holding on to an egg. Like, what? The there is a mark upon their ancient denomination. Still to be shown. For there is even now among them a city, Mazaka, right, which may inform those that are able to understand 
that so was the entire nation once called. Whoa. The, the whole nation was named after Moses. The whole nation was named after Mazaka or Mosak or Mosak the founder. And that's when we started digging on. Man, I mean, Josephus, man, he, he, he led us right here. Out of the book Tower of Babel, the cultural history of our ancestors. Let's get this bigger. Alright, and it's breaking all kinds of this. It's breaking the Moshi culture and the Meshek culture. Graham Hancock also did some great drop on this. And over here it says, much of modern Russia, parts of modern Georgia. We're talking about the Russes, right? The Russians. We've already been digging on these Russian icons. So you already know we're talking about black people. We're talking about so-called African Americans, what they'll call today. Negroes. Everybody's hiding your history, my people. And it comes out when they start being smug. That's when we start being like, look, man, this ain't no play play no more. You, you got to just... This is ridiculous. It starts getting ridiculous. But hold up, hold up. We're just talking about Mazaka. Meshe, Moshe, right? What it uh Moshashini, founded by Mosad. All right. There's also a mark on their ancient denomination. Still to be shown. There's even among them a city called Mazaka, which may inform those that are able to understand. That so is the entire nation once called Mazaka, Mosak, Meshi, Meshi, the Meshaks. We're talking like Mexico. What would Mexico have to do with the Mashikin or the Mazakin or the Mashikin or the Mazakin? I mean, how? And this is all related to Mazaka or what they're calling the Cappadocians, which is related to Constantinople. And the Byzantine Empire, or the Rus, the Russians. We're talking the Russian icons, man. How do they connect to the Americas, man? Oh man, I mean, connect, connect. It's connect, gang, man. Because when you talk the Rouches, part of the modern Georgia, right? You got a Georgia right here in America, right? In the Caucasus region, Huns, ancient Mazaka. Or Mosak, or Moshi, Moshka, or Moshkavi, Cappadocia. Moscow reflects the old name. Possibly migration as far as South America. So you see it right in our face, bone man, tied in. In Tower of Babel, the cultural history of our ancestors by Bodie Hodge. The connection with Russia to South America, which now connects you basically to the lands of Preston John, man. Emperor of the Three Indies, man. Asia, the Americas, and so on. Right? Russia the Moshi, possibly the Moshe, and cultures in South America, and the now dead Moshika languages in Peru. When you research this, Moshika only went extinct about 100 years ago or so. So recently, you stopped speaking Moshi, Moshika. Remember, one more time, in the book of Josephus, Antiquities of the Jews, <laughs> you got Mosak. Now the Cappadocians, there's also a mark on their ancient denomination. Still to be shown, it's still coming out, it's still to be revealed. This is what's happening right now. For there is even now among them a city called Mazaka, which may inform those that are able to understand that so is the entire nation. The entire nation was once named after Moses, man. Moses, as in what? The Meshi or Moshika. We're talking about South America. Which we're talking about Central America, which means we're talking about North America, which definitely means we're talking about the Meshi, the Mashikas, Mexicos, 
right? The Meshesh, Meshek, Meshi, Mexico, Mexico. So the entire nation was once named after Moses from Russia all the way to South America, Mexico, and in between. That's why you got the Muscovies and the and the Michigans. <coughs> The Meshio God, Michigan. I mean, all this plays when you're talking about Moses, man. You know, all this plays when you're talking about the Russian icons, the Russians. You did. All of it plays, man. All of it plays. So when you talk to Russes and it's right in your face and they put you on the crest and you're just talking to Rus and you're seeing clearly, you're seeing clearly how it all connects in the true depictions of Israel being dug up in the catacombs, the frescoes that are being destroyed. And you see in 2019, a so-called Jew-ish, you know, megastar Bill Maher got his own show and he gives us his nasty schmuck and he says that this doesn't exist, that this isn't the true depiction, that these so-called black Hebrews are perpetrating. You're going to cut these people off from their bloodline. Oh, that's... You're going to cut these people off from their bloodline, man. Knowing that we're supposed to be searching for our shepherd. Knowing that we're supposed to be searching for Hawa and David, our Khan, our priest king. Who is Preston John with the fountain of youth taking six baths. Everybody know what Preston John looked like. Hey, man, in the races of man... Love the Thai battle. We're talking about the new world, this erroneous phase, seeing that it was very old world, a very old world, not new world. The new world is a very old world in every sense of the word that the copper colored race of America, that race which extended throughout the length and breadth of the land, <laughs> extended throughout the length and breadth of the land. That's why you are the definition, man. That's why you're the definition, man. That's why you're the definition, man. This ain't no play play. You're the definition, man. The copper colored what? That the copper colored race of America which extended throughout the length and breadth of the land, were neither metamorphosed Welshmen, nor Connaught men, nor Norwegians, nor even Polynesians. All right, so who are you? Who Who's the Naga? Who's the copper-colored Naga found here? Who are we talking about then? Let's, let's, let's talk serious. Let's talk Turkey. <laughs> let's talk Constantinople. Let's talk Mazaka. <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, man, this ain't just about Bill Moore. This is about your climate, man. This is about the freezing over. We just talking what? We just talking Mazaka. Possibly the Moshe and cultures in South America and now dead languages and Mexican languages in Peru. We're connecting Peru Salam with with Mazaka, all right, you're connecting what they call Constantinople or Khazaria, all that connection, man, the Byzantine directly with Peru. This is what you're doing in real time. Connecting the Rus, all right, connecting the Rus of the Russians, which is right in your face, with the frescoes, with the frescoes, man. Through tremendous drop by Thai battle. Who are these people? Who's these copper colored Nagas? I believe offered the credulous for the peopling of America, always accepting that standby of the thoroughbred theorists, namely that the copper Indians, the African Americans, the blacks, the Negroes, the Copper Indians, that is, the true Americans, 
were the lost tribes of Israel, the true Americans, the true Americans, the true Americans, because we just talking Mazaka, man, connecting it to Peru and what? South America, Mazaka, Moshak, Rusha, the Meshakes, not of Japheth. <laughs> That's why Josephus had to just throw them in there. Uh, yeah, man, uh, these these Mosaks, there's a mark on their ancient denomination still to be shown. For there's even among them a city called Mazaka. A city called Mazaka. Mosak, Moshi, Moshi, Meshi, Meshi. You're just talking Meshaks, man. Still to be shown, there's a mark. For those that are able to understand how Mashika connects to Mazaka, which is Cappadocia. How does that connect to Capilia? Oh, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Look, man. You don't have to be on this play play, man. Not when we're just talking Capilia, man. This is the glossary of the OSB. We're going we're gonna to get right in. I don't, I don't even want to do this right now. But we're just talking Moses, Mosa. We're just talking Cappadocia. And yeah, right here, you see this name. I know it's small. We're talking with Moses and Capilia. We're connecting it all. Phantoms and duplicates. Put them all back together again. Capilia. Capilia. C-A-P-I-L-Y-A. A deliverer. So Cappadocia, Mazaga, Moses, Meshi, Meshika, Messiah, the Meshiach, a deliverer, Kappa, Cappadocia, a man of India, the three Indies, right? Contemporaneous, meaning he lived at the same damn time as Moses. He lived at the same time. And like Moses, he delivered the faithists out of bondage, not by migration, but by establishing their freedom throughout India. Wow, he also wrought miracles. So he established their freedom. It wasn't that they had to leave. He reestablished them on their own land. We're talking Capit, Capilia. Contemporaneous, lived at the same time. Lived at the same time. A deliverer. Kappa, Kappa. Okay. Right. Because Josephus just said, Mossad, now they are Cappadocians. Right. Kappa. Okay. And then we got, in the Tower of Babel drop, that this Mazaka is Mosak, Moshe, Meshi, right? Mosca, Muscovy, Cappadocia, all the same names. Moscow reflects the old name. Because you're talking Moshe, connecting Moshe all across the world, man, all across the world, all across the plane, man, all across the plane, from this India to that India. From Russia, from Moscow, to South America, to Peru, to the Mexico. We're just talking Mazaka. We're talking Kappa, Kappa, Capilia. You already know what Ronald Sanders got to say. You already know about the blackness, right? He says, what? On page 47 for... If his remotest Ethiopian origins, we're just talking Prester John's letter, right? Prester John, the tribe of Moses. There is a tribe of Moses. We're talking the Meshika, right? Let's go over here to 46. There is also a tribe of Moses, our just master. This is an account, an account from Eldad to Dan. This is Eldad's description. There is also a tribe of Moses. Right, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? 
There is also a tribe of Moses, our just master, which is called the tribe of Yannis, because it fled from idol worship and clung to the fear of God. A river flows around their land for a distance of four days' journey on every side. They dwell in beautiful houses provided with handsome towers, which they have built themselves. They sow and reap and have all sorts of gardens with all sorts of fruit and cereals, namely beans, melons, gourds, onions, garlic, wheat, and barley, and the seed grows a hundredfold. They have faith. They know the law. They know the law. They know the law. So these are folks right here in this old world that already know the law. Moreover, they see nobody and nobody sees them except the four tribes who dwell on the other side of the rivers of Ethiopia. We, we, we already talked about this Ethiopia term. So you know which Ethiopia you're in, the Hebrews are in, that know the law. Oh, man, we're going to get back in the river, Sam and Yah. These are Levites of the tribes of Moses and the priesthood. And though not all of them are necessarily prophets or priests, the whole nation of them implies an exalted religiosity, man. An exalted religiosity, a whole nation of them. Exalted, exalted religiosity, man. A whole nation of them. Exalted, exalted religiosity, holding the towel, right? The towel, right? Let's go. A whole nation of them implies an exalted religiosity. Indeed, they were too exalted for the possession of territory. We'll get back in the Kenites, the Rechabites, in biblical times, and were not one of the twelve tribes among whom Joshua divided up the land of Canaan. They are therefore not one of the ten lost tribes. This legend of gathering of them in the country of their own is not exclusive to Eldad, but its origins are quite obscure, and its name is given them. Yannis is simply a Hebrew word that means fleeing, so that it may not be a proper name, but a designation, the tribe that flees, that is, from idol worship. So there's a tribe of Moses that's separate from the other tribes, it's not just one of the ten lost tribes. And it, they are Levites, but they're their own branch of Levites. They're their own mixed multitude. But other texts make Yannis a proper name. Which can be either that of the tribe or its Levite founder. This could be a direct forebearer of Prester John. And they break down Prester John, man. But, you know, we're just talking Prester John. Right? Got the founder of you. Six baths, we're talking Florida and all this stuff here. For if its remotest Ethiopian origins have a Jewish coloration or a Hebrew coloration with this Ethiopia here, his most up-to-date Ethiopian image in the 15th century had, as we have seen, a black one. So the Ethiopian image in the 15th century, as we have seen, a black one, we can thereby see in all its richness, the tolerance implied to the vision of Prester John, because no one was tripping that he was a black man or a brother. Everyone knew he was a brother. Everyone knew he's a brother. So it only became an issue, you know what I'm saying, with this particular hijack here recently. Although Eldad and his fellow, fellow Danites apparently in their time did not, and when we're talking that, then we're talking the tribes of Moses, right? We're talking all the frescoes, right? Straight up. Although Eldad and his fellow Danites apparently in their time did not have to be black to be Ethiopian, and anthropologically more sophisticated 15th century or 1400s, right? When did they roll up on you, they say? <coughs> 1492, Papa Bull, 1452. So more anthropologically, more sophisticated 15th century tended to take for granted that a king of Ethiopia could not have been any other color but a black one, right? But at least for the length of historical moment, the secrets of Prester John did not seem any more perturbed by his black than by his Jewish aspect or his Hebrew aspect. 
Then they talk about the two Ethiopias. And they had an interesting quote from Homer in here. There we go. It says, Homer said of the Ethiopians that they live at the ends of the earth, some near the sunrise, some near the sunset. So when you talk Ethiopians, you got, it's, it's a very vague, it has nothing to do with geography or orientation. It just means in that you're around these burnt face, dark skin, whatever you want to call it, Negro people, whether you are, you know what I'm saying, in the direction of the what they say, Th these real Ethiopians live at the end of the earth near the sun, some near the sunrise, some near the sunset. So you are the Ethiopians that live near the sunset. And Homer told you that. You live at the ends of the earth, my naga, because they just found you here, man. To them, you're at the very ends of the earth. This is fantasy land. Hell yeah, we got to talk fantasy, because this is fantasy land. I mean, we are talking the found of you. So when you hear Ethiopia, oh, Ethiopia this, Ethiopia that. But most of us associate the fountain of perpetual youth with the new world, especially Florida. This has only been the case for the last 500 years for a much longer stretch in history, actually dating all the way back to the 5th century B.C. Its home was believed to be Ethiopia. And now Ronald Sanders is saying what? Or Homer is saying what? The Ethiopians live at the ends of the earth, some near the sunrise, some near the sunset. So which Ethiopia? You got to choose your Ethiopias, man. And you know what I'm saying? Look, man, you already know what time it is. You already know what they're calling Ethiopia, right? Ethiopia. You already know who they're calling the what? What they call him? A... Hey. up here it's up here they called him an oriental I'm trying to see where they put it oh there we go <laughs> I was right there the whole time the mis the story of the mysterious oriental leader Preston John so when you talk about Hitler you talk about him um, you know calling uh, the image that you're calling now as Jewish a bastard he had all these images he labeled that a bastard and the images of the Negro the image of the other Negro, he had it as an Oriental. And he called you Oriental. You're in the Far East. You were called the Oriental. Because you're in the Far East. You're at the ends of the earth. Where's that drop? Oh, we're going to say, there we go. You're at the Far East, right? Where the sun sets, right? Where the sun rises. Ethiopian, Oriental. So all these things are mirror images stacked on top of it. And all, you know, it, it all has to do with the, the actual drop. It all has to do with who you are. We're gonna, we're gonna get and see this rarity oh, yeah. which on, many man. riders on, say man. does not exist anywhere in the oh, world man. not yet man not yet man we go we go it has it, been man. captured quote with great difficulty we're gonna get him man we're gonna get him man i mean obviously you see i'm ready i'm ready to get him man again love the tie battle with this drive right here on the races of men so now when you see how it's all connected how it's all coming together you know what we're calling copper color copper tone Oriental, Ethiopian. You see the frescoes, you see the images, you see the sources. You, I mean, Preston John blows everything, everything out the door, wide open. 
as to, you know, at least starting the dialogue of, all right, well, who are the descendants of King David? Where, where, King David in, in Israel over there, in the state of Israel? No, we're not talking the state of Israel, man. You know, we're not talking the state, the state of Israel. If anything, you're talking about the actual Kalelus. You're talking about the actual promised land. So this was an interesting, uh, you know, kind of one-two that this author was putting together when he was talking about the copper color races in America. And there's much more in this book. And there's much more to connect. And there's a lot in the book of the Realm of Preston John that Ty Ballard's dropping. All of it's connected to the indigenous Naga, the indigenous, you know, who they were calling the, 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 the person of the Indies, right? The Oriental, the Oriental. And he said, what? Well, that is, the true Americans were the lost tribes of Israel who fled there on rafts headed, I suppose, by... Prester John. So he just threw this out and he kept on going. He just kept on going. You know what I mean? But you got to have more. All these tabs is just recon. You got to have more recon, you know, into what this priest king is, what this means, what this title is. How that's what the Pope is now perpetrating today is to be, you know, this priest over all these kingdoms. That's the title of the Prester. It's a hijack of who Prester John is because no king is valid. No king is valid unless they check in. And they all got to check in under King David. That's why David does what? David is their king. Where? David is their king, their prince forever. David is their one shepherd over them. So there's no room for another shepherd when you already got a shepherd. When your shepherd got the fountain... The fountain of you. And that's why the author of the races of men is connecting that these are tribes of Israel who fled there on rafts, headed, I suppose, by Prester John. And what did Ronald Sanders just say about the fleeing? That this fleeing, the tribe that flees, that is from idol worship, that is the Yannis or Yohannes. Latin form Johannes is the presbyter. Johannes is Johannes. Is John. Is king. We're just talking to Ethiopians, man. We're just talking the blackness. Historical moment. The seekers of Preston John did not seem more perturbed by his black than his Hebrew. He's a black Hebrew. He's a black Hebrew. But what does Bill Moore, Bill Moore have to say, man? So it's only like a couple of minutes on this clip or so and we're gonna keep it pushing to talk climate change man the holocaust man the burnt sacrifice man love to the droplets man fall back and drop nation always come over here you can press listen dig on whatever we bumping right now we just we blazing man we in the frequency rehab with isaac ford right now so go ahead and dig on it get your world dropped you know dig some more on them you know white white folk Painting their face black and all the black face that we was talking about. Get all that drop, man. Some dragon drop. Historic drop. Man, Isaac drop. And, and Carrie May also dropped. I think this link as well. Inheritors of a Nation. We're going to talk about this. Get back in that, you know, whole mainframe happening in the 1800s. The say Some survival drop, man. Go ahead and get it, man. And I get so many links sometimes. Uh, you know, I, I, I may be, you know, slipping on. Who dropped what? To tell you the truth, it's so many. So if you see a link up here and you drop something, just let me know, man, so I can, you know, make sure you get all your credit, man. Because I want everyone who's digging on links and dropping them to get credit. I want people to know that this is a whole nation full of water. You dig? So make sure you, you know, you let me know. You know what I'm saying? Hit me up, music at 432thedrop.com. Hit me up anyway, man. Let me know how you're feeling. You know, I'll get back eventually, man. You know what I mean? I'm going to get back. And uh, much love to y'all, man. Much love to all the dragon sponsors on the wall. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. I mean, this is some great links, as you can see. 
uh, Aqua Tabi holding us down, as you can see. You know what I mean? This is, uh, you know, we just going with the flow. Where's that Bill Maher drop, man? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about who set fire to Moscow. We're going to open up to Kumse, part three like that. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. Bill Maher, I love to, uh, who's my bro that dropped this, man? All y'all leaving incredible comments, man. I appreciate all y'all. This is uh, Michael Michael Jackson Rodriguez, man. He said, check out this video. Started at the three-minute mark. Y'all been holding me down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The whole time, man. Yeah, man. I mean, all this, all, all this is this great drive that was just coming in off the, the, uh, the Kumse video. And... I do my best, you know what I mean, when I'm able to sit down for a minute to get back at y'all, man. I would love to pat to, pat to 10. He said, bro, you've been holding it down before the locks started hanging, man. Regardless of the slander and backbiting, I respect how you kept it classy. You have my support. Whatever you and the family need, bless you and yours, King. And AI, you know what I'm saying? Because we definitely will address and uh, make sure our name is, is clean. You did, you know what I'm saying? Make sure we... Or, uh, you know, focus on our path, but then we get right back at it. You know what I'm saying? We, we start searching again, man. We start searching for Hawaii. They seek their Lord, right? We start search for our breath of security, Hawaii and David. That's why we're on part number 40 in, in YouTubeville. And we did a whole season already in the ether. We did about 45 parts of Press the John in the ether. Now we're in season two, like episode three or four coming up. So, we ain't stopped searching for our creator in a while. We ain't stopped searching for David. And all this is within us. All of it is already within us, man. So I appreciate you, my family, Pata. Because around here, we do try to keep it classy. You know what I mean? I mean, you got to surf the wave up and surf it down. We're going to keep it real. But we will keep it really classy. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll definitely keep it classy. <laughs> Much of how. Let's go, man. So, yeah, love to Bill, uh, Michael Jackson, uh, Rodriguez, man, who dropped this on us. I'll make sure I link it up and get linky. Yeah, I'll make sure I link it up. You know what I mean? You know, y'all let me know sometimes, man. There'll be so much coming in. But here we go, man. Bill Moore. What are you saying to us, man? Let's get this TV drive, man. He says black Hebrews are not real Israelite? Well, how did he say it, man? Maybe we just tripping. May, maybe Drop heard him wrong. Right, Michael Jackson Rodriguez? Maybe we tripping. Maybe we the issue. Maybe we the problem. He said, go. I know. Thank you very much. I do. And hold up, man. We already know, man. We already know, man. We got to put up this. Uh, I got to find one. Copyright. Such and such and such. Yeah, uh, what's this? What's this? Oh, here we go. All right, here we go, man. Before we even get into this, I don't want to wing wang. You know what I mean? All we're doing is criticizing, doing some teaching, some scholarships, some research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute. All right, section 107, 19, 1976. All right, leave me alone, man. Stop the play, play. Let's go. We're getting a little tabby here. We're getting a little tabby. But love to y'all, we're getting a little tabby, man. Because I like to keep it linky. I like to keep it linky. Let's go. I appreciate that. Glad you got that out of your system. <laughs> no one wants to grab a pussy and get a surprise whoa, whoa, whoa. in America. Whoa. Everyone is talking about the smirk heard round the world. You saw this kid... Uh, this week, remember this kid? Yeah. If you don't know what this is, if you're living under a rock, okay, here's what happened. This was at the Lincoln Memorial. This is on the mall. But, of course, at the mall in Washington, there's all kinds of people protesting. And there were three groups there that day that got into it. There was the Black Hebrew Israelites. They, there's not many of them. They... <laughs> There are. They they're in New York. I remember they stand on the corner calling white people crackers. And 
they finally got some attention. They believe African Americans are the literal descendants of the Israelites in the Bible. So there's not very many of them. <laughs> I mean, and he knows the truth. You know what I mean? Now, we, we showed you all the proof already. We, we spent an hour digging on drop, showing you the proof, showing you the walls, the frescoes, the sources, connecting the indigenous, the aboriginals of America with the actual Negro, connecting the Negro in America, whether you're in North America, Central, whether you're talking the Meshi and the Mexicas and the Mosak and the Mazakas and the all that connection, you know what I'm saying, back and forth to the Ruses. We, we, we're, we're putting it all together, man. <laughs> we got some more we're going to talk about, but I just, I mean, I just can't believe, I can't believe he's saying this. I can't believe you, Bill Moore. Bill Moore, Moore, he's a Moore, Bill Moore. Just like the Coens, the Kinds, the Coens, and the Moors, and the Mahars. Phantoms and duplicates, man. Descendants of the Israelites in the Bible. Except we crackers. And <laughs> they finally got some attention. They believe African Americans are the literal descendants of the Israelites in the Bible. Except we have DNA and they're not. DNA. Now we've done lessons uh, discussing DNA, mitochondrial DNA. You know, how DNA is basically going through your mitochondria or tracing your mother's path. It's not really, you know, linking seeds or the paternals like that. It's just, that's why they go through the mother and say, well, my mom is Jewish, I'm Jewish. You know, remember, when Genghis Khan rode up on Preston John, he wanted to marry his daughters so that he can get in the bloodline. So that they can, that's when they switch to the matriarchy because they had to go through the daughters to get the actual bloodline. When they took our wives, when they took our, our 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 daughters, they knew that they were marrying into priesthood. That's why they're like, well, who's your mother? Who's your mother? Who's your mother? If your mother's a Hebrew, oh, if, if your mother's a Khan, you're a Khan. And that's how the hijack decided it. They forgot about the father. Forget the seed. Let's cut the seed off. But the mother is, has a connection. And if you put a baby through the womb of a Hebrew woman, then you're a Kohen. Then you're a Moor. Then you're a Mahar. Of the Israelites in the Bible. Except we have DNA and they're not. <laughs> they did 23 and Me and it came back, you're kidding, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's funny. A hey, good one, man. Get a kick and a smile. One more time. Man. Some attention. They believe African Americans are the literal descendants of the Israelites in the Bible. Except we have DNA and they're not. <laughs> they did 23 and Me and it came back, you're kidding, right? <laughs> but... <laughs> But the black Hebrews started to <laughs> mix it up with these Catholic high school kids who were there from Kentucky. Uh, all right. Are the literal descendants of the Israelites in the Bible. Except we have DNA and they're not. <laughs> yeah, you know, I can't, I can't. I can't make this shit up. So, it's one thing if it doesn't exist. It's one thing if it's being destroyed and burnt off the walls. When you see what the whole world is really looking like. The swarthy world that Franklin's talking about, right? I'm just saying, when you see what the world is really looking like, man. Hi, Borean. Yeah, man, this is South America, right? The Mas Mashika, right? The Mashika, so was the entire nation was called, right? According to Josephus. 
you zooming in, you seeing Kush right over here, right on top of, you know, I mean, South America. And yeah, this is a reality simulation in there, you know, conducted in Arizona. But you think they're just completely play playing you? Because when you come over here to Africa, you have a whole other picture. And it seems like back when things were connected, it all started here in the Black Kingdom. You have Timbuktu or Timbuktu right over South America. You have Kush, Egypt with the calling Stasia. You see right here, Luxor, Kim. You see the the Kirshis or Kushish Sea. Alright, so you got all this Egypt stuff. You got Shem right over there. You know what I mean? You got this Argos. You got Kalk, Corinthia, Corinthians. You got Ophir, right? The land of Ophir, the gold, all the gold. And all this stuff connected, man. All the way up to the north and south clans of Samaria. So you got Samaria. And when we have pick land, we're going to get back on our picks, man. You got pick land divided into 12 tribes. And these are all their talismans, right? All, all their animals, right? The panther, okay? All this is over. This is South America. This is Zimbabwe. This is Punt, Punt, Zimbabwe, and Iranistan. This is Persia connected to South America. My point is that by the time you came back here, you saw all these copper color races already here, all these Nagas already here, and they were already connected to the old world or the lands of Prester John, the priest king. Who had the found of you. The king over the three Indians. Was already ruling all throughout all this. Man all this. King David was ruling it all man. King David was ruling it all man. Preston John had to drop over the whole thing man. All the oriental had to drop man. I mean. I don't know y'all. I think it needs. I think it's time to talk melanated Nazis. And normally, I don't do a feature within a feature. <laughs> but nah, man, uh, you know, this was some great, you know, interesting drop that was sent in by Drop Nation. This is back in 2016. So I just wanted to revisit that, fall back, and remember what we're talking about here, man. Just remember what we're talking about here, man. There are. They, they've been in New York. I remember they stand on the corner calling white people crackers. And they finally got some attention. They believe African Americans are the literal descendants of the Israelites in the Bible. Except we have DNA and they're not. Got it. Got it. Got it. Because he just said it with such a smug face. I mean, look at this smug. Look at the smug. Look at the stones on this man. Look at the balls, man. Look at the cooth. <laughs> How dare he, right? Because he's not going to give you no evidence. He's not going to present no sources. He's not going to show nothing. He's just going to say it and look and, and give you the eyes to brainwash you into thinking you crazy. Either we crazy or he crazy. Which one is it, man? Because it can't be both. Either we crazy or he crazy. Well, back in 2016, man, you pretty much... You pretty much, you know what I'm saying, dead at the whole thing. And we're going to get some of this and uh, make a dismount, you know, talking about these civilizations, man. Love to Chef Candy. She actually dropped this on us on, dropped this on us on the live show, referring to the great dying, the great dying, the great dying, the great dying. Colonization of the Americas caused climactic change. They said so many of you Nagas died. When they invaded you, that the loss of the carbon or your breath, the loss of you breathing, literally caused a climactic cooling, like a freezing over, like a plague, like a curse, like when did Antarctica really freeze over, man? And was it connected to the great dying? Did so many of you die that the whole world was frozen over? Or these areas were frozen over. How did Europe, how was Europe affected? How did Europe get directly affected climactically by the invasion? 
We don't do that for the dismount. Right now we're talking melanated Nazis. And let's just get it from here. This is, um, you know, something that we were surfing. A source that we were surfing regarding this this speech from Hitler, man. Let's see what we had to say about it about three years ago. Let's go. Um, I'll read it, you know. It's for those that are at work with their earphones in. The struggle between the people and the hatred amongst them. <laughs> is being nurtured by very specific interested parties. Hmm, who are these interested parties? Are they the same parties that put you into captivity? Let's go. It is a small, rootless, international clique. Small, rootless. They have no root here which means they have other seed from elsewhere. International click. So now when you think international, like, ooh, I'm going to be international, nationwide, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, as the seeds of the creator, we are naturally spread, you know. But when it comes to having a land and an area and what you're rocking, you're, you're talking about someone who wants everything. The whole pie, right? One world order, right? Everything international, small and rootless. That is turning the people against each other. So now you got these wars being financed, turning people based on these created religions and different things like that. Anything that's just separating you or confusing you between you and the creator of your sacred trees. The basic law of not putting no power before the power that creates you. You need to be told that? Not to kill and steal and honor your, your mother and father? Come on, man. Come on, man. This is basic, basic stuff, man. But these people are small and rootless, this international clique that is turning the people against each other, even our own people against each other. <laughs> That does not want them to have peace. Alright? So this international clique does not want peace. They come in peace. They act like they're coming in peace. Oh, the pilgrims came to America. They share Thanksgiving. So we're going to remember that every year. You have to be a fool not to be able to open up a book and know that. Even if you don't know you're the indigenous or know that these so-called Negroes walking around are indigenous to America. If you don't get that shit by now, at least get the fact that people were slaughtered on that day. And you celebrate slaughter like they do. You slave. You celebrate slaughter like them. You are no better than them. You rock with them. Let's go. It is the people who are at home both nowhere and everywhere. Whoa. So this people of international, this international clique, right? This gang, this rootless gang. They are a people who are at home both nowhere and everywhere. Mm. They have no home. Mm. How could it be? Were their land sunk at one point? Let's go. Who do not have anywhere a soil rootless. Now, we could be talking about one click, or we could be talking about many more people with Mr. Hitler. But if you want to focus on this one group, cool. But I'm just saying we could be talking about many more people than this one group. Small and rootless. There are many today who are rootless. But okay, for the sake of conversation, we do not have anywhere a soil on which they have grown up. I don't even know how to even break it down or more break it down than that. That's very simplistic, y'all. This seed of people have grown up nowhere on this earth. So it was implanted here. It is devouring everything, according to Hitler and RFG and some other sources. Let's go. 
abends auf den sie gewachsen sind, sondern die heute in Berlin leben. But who live in Berlin today, in Brussels tomorrow, in Paris the next day after that? Bang. So he's not just trying to talk about, see, they, they, they want you to think, oh, he hates all people other than blonde hair, blue eyed people. Uh, pictures don't suggest that. I'm not saying he wasn't racist or something, whatever you want to call it. I don't know the guy. I just know that they painted a picture and we've learned, just like RFG said, to reverse everything they say. And start there. If they say you're spinning on a ball, just reverse it for the sake of knowing these motherfuckers are habitual liars. About everything. Everything. So when you find yourself shoulder to shoulder agreeing with them, you're in trouble. Especially about your habitat. If they're telling you it's round, you might want to start the other way. If they're telling you that's west, it's east. If they're telling you it's north, it's south. I know. Yes, they're crazy. Yes. They would do that, yeah. Morgen aus, wo in Brüssel sein können. Übermorgen in Paris. Oder in Prag. Oder in Wien. Oder in London. Und in die Überreich. Everywhere is their home, right? The Jews, who they're calling so-called these Jews. <laughs> Remember now, the term American applies to all Europeans born in America. But originally in 1828, in the Webster Dictionary, it just said the copper color race is found here by the European. That is what an American is by definition of the Webster Dictionary in 1828. The copper color race is found here. Negro, what are you talking about? They gave you the history that you came from somewhere else. To take your land. See? It's real simple. Now who financed that shit? I don't think it was this guy. So is the enemy of your enemy your friend? What's going on? They are the only ones who can be addressed as international elements because they're just everywhere, right? Let's go. Because they conduct their business everywhere. They want one world order. Let's go. The people cannot follow them. The people is bounded to its soil. Bounded to its fatherland. Hmm. Now, who's he really talking about? Let's go. Bounded by the possibilities of life that state the nation offers. just a minute and 20 seconds but when you have a different perspective on it you know that's all we do here is surf the wave and so the fuels that the jews are using are actually to get the babies out man so i just wanted to expose you to the information a little bit <laughs> it is a small rootless international clique small rootless they have no root here which means they have other seed komenichi all right so let's get this man shout out to black food for having us up i've been looking for this man so y'all go ahead and dig on it i'll read it as we go all right so this is a letter you know whether it's real or this is this but it's all over different publications, you know what I mean? But it goes in sync with what we've been digging on. So that's why I know this ain't so left field as you would think now that you got some of the backdrop. Hitler said even in his death, he will start War War Three. One of his soldiers asked how. Hitler replied, the day mankind finds out what I was trying to defend 
this nation, Germany, from, then that's the day World War III will start. Well, I think the nation is now kind of finding out. <laughs> it's now getting clear what he might have been defending because we've been defending ourselves from the same shit. Let's go. For on that day, mankind will learn that I was trying to save my nation from the Freemasons, the Illuminati, the Jews. For if the Americans win the war, then they will conquer the world and forever be enslaved. So if these, if this corporation of America wins this war, then they're going to conquer the world as these international bankers and forever be a slave to the Jews. So everyone's going to forever be a slave, perpetual slavery, and they will try to conquer God. Now, what does Hitler mean? By this America, this American corporation, <laughs> backed clearly, because America is going to be slave to these Jews, and they're going to ask, "Well, why? How do you know America is going to be slave to the Zionists?" We're just talking about the Zionists, right? We're going to set up a state of Israel in 1947. Ooh, because we got roots here, right? But he just called them rootless, and now that we know who we are, we can now. Pretty much figure everybody else out. So do you know who America has in its possession? So when Hitler says, man, again, for if the Americans win the war, then they will conquer the world and forever be a slave to the Jews, Zionists, and they will try to conquer God. Only fallen angels try to conquer God. So when they're rootless, then you ask, well, what seed are you? Are you of an angel seed that thinks they can conquer God? Do you know who America has in its possession? My Negro, so-called Negro, African-American, so-called black, but you are not destitute of light. You are not atrociously wicked, as the definition of black says. So don't call yourself atrociously wicked or destitute of light. Or pale. You are pure. You are the definition of white. You are the whiteness. Lebanon. The whiteness. The seed. Of we ain't talking W-I-G-H-T. The whiteness. Shout out to Teach. Teach. Do you know who America has in its possession? No, the soldier replied. So Hitler's asking. He's saying he's going to try to conquer God. Do you know who America got? Mm. Do you know what they did? Mm. Do you know what these people was crazy enough to do? No, the soldier replied. The Americans has the jewels of God. Hey, Americans have stolen God's precious jewels. Who are God's precious jewels? What do you mean his precious jewels, the soldier asked? Who were these people put in captivity here, found here? The copper color race is found here in Peru, Jerusalem. Why did Columbus say he's coming to America to seize the holy city in Mount Zion? Here. Why did they find the Hebo and put him in captivity on their own land and tell him they came from Africa so they can take their shit and steal their minds, steal their energy, their vibration? steal their ancient love song and give them an excellent new tune. Mm. Hitler said, America has stolen the Jews, the Jews of God, his jewelry, the Negroes. The Negroes. They are the true Hebrews. I live in New York. I remember they stand on the corner calling white people crackers. And 
<laughs> they finally got some attention. They believe African Americans are the literal descendants of the Israelites in the Bible. Except we have DNA and they're not. <laughs> <laughs> See how he looked in just to check in with somebody? He, he had to check in with somebody. He got to keep his job. I mean, he, he, he got to say the right thing. Even if it's the wrong thing. Even if it's the wrong thing, man. Why did they find the Hebo and put him in captivity on their own land and tell him they came from Africa so they can take their shit and steal their minds, steal their energy, their vibration, steal their ancient love song and give them an excellent new tune? Hitler said America has stolen the Jews, the Jews of God. His jewelry, the Negroes. The Negroes. They are the true Hebrews. Now, I read this a long time ago, but now that we've done more recon, you know, and we know ourselves separately, you know, We've been researching our Maya uh, cliches and Papu Vuz and all these books, man. And it's like, now you get it. Now do you get it? Now do you see? Hitler said America has stolen the Jews, the Jews of God, his jewelry. The Negroes, they are the true Hebrews. What a foolish move and a direct challenge to God. Even even Hitler wasn't foolish enough to do to to challenge God. He understood some level of order that they don't understand. I mean, we can at least say that he understood some level of order, even with the technology, the Vermont drop. I mean, look, they say Hitler set up a base in that article, right? Then you got Admiral Byrd going over there, what in the forty something, whatever, with five thousand soldiers ready for combat, they end up getting their asses kicked. That's documented. Some even report all these flying machines whooping their ass. And you see how Hitler was already on the Vermont drop, the flying machine drop. So when they went over there, what do you think they were looking for? Hitler. What happened? They got their ass kicked by flying machines. Now, do you understand why they don't let nobody go their own way or do their own recon around any part of Antarctica, the ice wall that is surrounding you. Surrounding you. They keep you in like sheep, like cattle. This is the middle earth. They keep you in the middle of the ice ring. They don't let you get to the lands beyond the ice. <laughs> and they say you're overpopulated. They are the true Hebrews. The Jews of God, his jewelry, the Negro, the Jews of God, his jewelry, the Negroes. America has stolen the Jews. They put the Jews into captivity on their own land. They've stolen their minds, their hearts, their land. The Jews of God, his jewelry, the Negroes, they are the true Hebrew. Hebo, Negro, Ebri. What a foolish move and a direct challenge to God. Direct challenge, rolling up, rolling up, man, on the copper color races found here. Found where, man? Hey, man, I'm just talking about Hyboria, found here. The Mexica, the Mazaka, rolling up on the Mexica, on the Lameshes, the Moshes, rolling up on these. Uh, how do you say? Rolling up on these tribes of Moses, these Meshika, Mozaka, these Cappadocians. I mean, it has everything to do. Everything to do with you. Oh man, let me get my juice. Let me get my juice bone. My busy.
Here we go. Here we go. It has everything to do with you, man. Everything to do with you. Because after getting all that drop in 2019, you still got to hear it like this. Like I remember they stand on the corner calling white people crackers and they finally got some attention. They believe African-Americans are the literal descendants of the Israelites in the Bible, except we have DNA and they're not. So who is this? Who is this? Who is this? They have no relation to the Hebrews. Who is this? The Rus, Rusha. They have no relation to the lost tribes of Israel identity. The lost tribes of Israel? No relation? Bill Moore? African Americans are the literal descendants of the Israelites in the Bible. Except we have DNA and they're not. <laughs> and they're not. Look at the schmug. Then why are we talking about the DNA project? Why are we talking about the Andrews DNA project? Even when we're talking DNA, we're talking lost tribes of Israel. We're talking your identity. We're talking the Rus and the Rushens. We're talking you. We're talking the tribe. And what happened when they rolled up on these tribes, when they rolled up on these Nagas, when they rolled up on these Nagas, what happened when they rolled up on these Nagas, man? The whole climate seemed to change. Everything changed. And pull up this link, man. We're going to get it for the dismount. Everything changed, man. Colonization of America caused climatic change, man. Love to ancientorigins.net. Chef Candy dropped this on us, man. When they rolled up on these races found here, remember what they said in Races of Men? That these copper Indians are the true Americans, the lost tribes of Israel, following Prester John, man. So they're part of the tribes that's taken six baths in the fountain of youth because we're just seeking David, man. King David, man. David, our king, who's doing what? The one shepherd. Prince forever, man. Then it all starts to make sense. Then we start to really get this drop, man. And they plan <laughs> dig on this and they plan on moving these false white Jews into a state of Israel. <laughs> so now they're going to create a state of Israel, move the false white Jewish in, give them power, let them hit you with a smug, and out of their own mouths, tell a lie to deny the heritage of the true. In the corner calling Hebrew. white people crackers. And <laughs> They finally got some attention. They believe African-Americans are the literal descendants of the Israelites in the Bible. Except we have DNA and they're not. <laughs> they did 23 and Me, and it came back, you're kidding, right? <laughs> but... <laughs> I mean, look at the schmug, man. Look at the schmug. Look at the schmug, man. So you got Hitler on one end, keeping it real. With a foolish move and a direct challenge to Hawaii, and they plan on moving these false white Jews, creating a state of Israel. Now they got a state of the matrix, denying the actual heritage of the real spill. Of the real spill. Um, anyone who knows anything about icons will immediately recognize this image as the Trinity. The, or otherwise known as the Hospitality of Abraham, of Andrei Rublov. Uh, this is not the original. The original is in Moscow in Russia, of course. But this is a wonderful... Let's go. ...glory. And uh, also in that vision, uh, there is a, a description... Well, everything you're looking at in Russia is melanated copper color, copper tone, which is the Byzantine Empire 
which is Mazaka, which is the Mashika, South America, Peru, Moshika, Moses, Moshe, which Josephus said that the entire nation, entire nation was once caused, which may inform those that are able to understand that the entire nation was once Mazaka or Moshi or Meshek or Meshiko or Michigan or Meshikan, Meshi, Moses, Mazaka, Mosak, all of his names after Moshe. You did. And it's all over. <laughs> St. Moses the Black is all over. So what happened, man, when they invaded these Indians, right? What happened when they invaded these Indians? What happened when they invaded the copper color races found here by the European? I'm talking the Khan dynasty. The Khans, man. What happened when they invaded the Khans? Remember Ty Battle? Hit us with this drop. I know it's small. From the realm of Preston John, just talking to Khan. It says the Khan. Is the name of authority or dignity which signifies the divine or soothsayer. All diviners are called Khan among them. So all the divine are called Khan. Kingdom of the Khan, Khan. We're talking Kara, Kara Katai, right? Cathay or Black Cathay because Kara is black. We're talking Moses the Black. And what happened when they wrote upon? The tribes of Preston John, the tribes of Moses, the tribe of Johannes. Huh? We just talking about Preston John, Priest King. Wow. A climactic change, man. A global freeze over, man. In 1492, Columbus voyaged to the Caribbean and discovered, right, or stumbled on some more people, some copper colored people. In reality, the New World, as the modern Americas were known, was already home to tens of millions of people who lived in highly sophisticated societies. In the past, it was assumed by many experts that the population of Americas prior to colonization was held relatively low. However, a team of the University of London has studied many news sources and Democrat demographic data. And according to the BBC, they found that up to 60 million people were living across the Americas. Triple that quadruple that so you see how many copper color nagas need to be here for you to be the definition of the american the great dying the arrival of spanish conquistadors such as cortez and the european con conquerors led directly to the deaths of about 56 million people hey i mean you know how we feel about these numbers but it's letting you know that it was a significant amount to cause some type of freeze over plague to occur, they called it the Great Dying. This is the actual Holocaust. 56 million people compared to what? There's 6 million in their Holocaust? Holocaust means a sacrifice, a burnt offering. The Great Dying is often referred to as genocide, a deliberate attempt to destroy an entire race because the European colonizers massacred and enslaved so many of the indigenous copper colored Nagas. Moreover, remember they just did it by poison, right? By viruses, right? Their, their policies led to a downfall of great civilizations such as the Aztec, Inca, societal collapse, major loss of life. The Europeans introduced diseases such as smallpox, man. It was all about disease, all about poison. So what happened? They say, however, the deaths of millions of Native Americans, indigenous copper color races found here, meant that great swaths of agricultural areas were abandoned and became grassland and forests, which are carbon dioxide absorbing vegetations. The reduced population also no longer had to clear land by fire for farmland, and this reduced carbon emissions. This, in turn, led to the significant decline in the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. So they try to make it seem like, oh, okay, well, you just weren't there on that land, and therefore there were less trees yeah you also were not breathing in such a fast loss of what they're calling 56 56 million people that suddenly come to a halt 
Now, what does this climate change, climatic change have to do with the Naga? The loss of so much carbon because of the great dying in the Americas meant that the atmosphere began to cool. There was a massive cooling. The Most High started cooling everything. They want to say, oh, it was because of the emissions of this. this. The Most High just decided to cool it all off. The Most High put it all under. Under whatever spell, under whatever you want to call frozen. The Most High froze Antarctica. You got the Perry Reese maps that show Antarctica in the 1500s or 1600s with no ice. And suddenly there's ice. There's a massive cooling in the atmosphere. The atmosphere began to cool. However, this was possibly other factors. Uh -huh. The cooling was dramatic. And it was apparent all over Europe. By the 16th century, for example, the Thames in London was would freeze over and Londoners would hold the frost frost ferries in the frozen river. And we got this in the ether and we connected this to the Battle of Thames. The Battle of Thames that had everything to do with the Kumse. Hold up, man. I mean, you know, we're gonna get back in this the Kumse. But all that is connected to what they were calling the, the Battle of Thames. So you got the Battle of Tipper Canoe. Battle of Thames right here in eighteen thirteen. So how does this Thames, you know what I mean, connect to what we're talking about in ancientorigins.net, this dramatic cooling. For example, the Thames, all right, same name in London, would freeze over. How is it connected to the Kumse? We're talking about the fall of the indigenous, the great dying. And that the entire world suffered massive cooling, such as areas in Antarctic that they're calling a little ice age, a little ice age. So, love to Chef Kenny because that's an interesting concept when you're digging on this ice situation. And of course, man, when it comes to these conquistadors and the disease that they brought the virus, this is what they do. Oh, there's only a little bit of whites, but we're just going to spread our disease around until they die and weaken them. Oh, uh, man. So, you know, get on that drop. Melanated Nazis, I'll leave the link so you can get the rest of that. You know, don't don't let Bill Maher piss you off <laughs> when you're talking to tribes of Moses. And, you know, when it comes to the tribes of Moses, you're talking to Priest King, Prester John, who they were, it, they didn't seem any more perturbed by his black, right, his blackness, right? So, you know what you're already dealing with. And you know who you are. And don't let Bill Moore just say something with that schmug, with that schmug on his face. With that schmug, you know what I mean? To try to throw you off from your investigation of self. Americans are the literal descendants of the Israelites in the Bible. Except we have DNA and they're not. <laughs> they did 23. No sweat, no sweat, no sweat. Because, you know, we had the frescoes. We have the frescoes. We know what's on your walls. We know that there's a Saint Moses on your walls. So anyone connected to this Saint Moses or anyone connected to this King David, these Negroes are who? Why did Columbus bring a Hebrew interpreter to talk to David, to talk to the priest Khan? Allow why? We're just talking the icons. We're just talking the treasures talking to treasures man you're talking to icons you're talking to treasures these Russian icons all over their walls and it's all over museums this museum right here is in uh, Massachusetts you know what I mean these are more connected to the Russian icons that are in Russia like literally getting pulled out of Russia. Remember the difference when you're talking these whites. You're talking demon when you talk whites. W I G H T word origin. You're gonna let them play play you. When you talk Cohen's, you know you're just talking the con. The con is the what type battle? What type battle say? Whereabout their princes are cons are called cons. Con is the name of authority. Dignity, you're talking to Cohen's the Khan. 
You're talking the indigenous that's being rolled up on. The dragon canoes, the chickamauguas, which literally means the river of death. You're talking the war. The war on the Naga. On the copper color races. The war on the so-called African American, right? That don't stop, won't stop. That don't stop, won't stop. That don't stop, won't stop. So suddenly now, you know, your true depiction is just being laughed at. It's still being mocked today in 2019. And what does that got to do with the climactic change, man? All across the world, all across the plane, the great dying. Because the most high, when it comes to you, Hey, man, this cooling, this cooling was dramatic. This cooling was dramatic. The Most High has dramatic responses. Dramatic responses. So how does this affect Europe? How does this affect the Black Plague and all the stuff happening that time there? You know what I mean? How does this affect, you know, all, all, all the, you know, I mean, they thought the world was ending. They thought the world was ending, which is why they were searching for the priest king, which is why they were searching for Presser John, why they were searching for the priest king, Soleiman, 1135, 1195, while they're connecting all these dots to try to eradicate the Naga in 1492, so-called Columbus selling the ocean blue. You got the traveler Benjamin of Tadula. Also dropping it on you, letting you know about this John, about this priest, about this John, about this priest, about this presbyter, the Indian king, the Indian king. So this Presbyter John, right, this Presbyter Juan is also referred to as the Indian king. Tabby, man, getting too tabby. There we go. <laughs> Preston John, the Indian king, sent his wonderful letter to various Christian princes, including Manuel of Constantinople, Frederick Roman Emperor. So all these are swarthy cons. So this was a letter to all these cons. To all these cons. This Preston John, this Indian king. So all these sources are already here right in front of us, man. When we start digging on the drop, we start to see clearly you dig. Now notice, he didn't say they're moving into Israel. He said they're moving into a state of Israel. So, he's not calling that Israel. <laughs> he's saying that they're moving them into a state of Israel. Let's go. America is desperate in its attempt to win this war using atom bombs on Japan. America will destroy the whole world in its attempt to conquer it. When America and its Jewish slave masters conquered the world and the world realized I was right, then all nations will begin a third world war, world war to dethrone America. So what's happening right now, man? Is this play play? All nations will begin a third world war to dethrone America. What is this happening right now? I mean, that's a fair question. And who is the bastard? Who put this together? The scholars among the serpent. The scholars among the dragon. And the records are coming out, destroying the lie. This is the proof. When you read Zechariah 9, verses 6, it's, God says, A fast that shall dwell in Ashdod, which is in the future. Now, when you uh, trace the uh, geographical location of Ashdod, it is Tel Aviv in Palestine. So, who's ruling over there? God says, A fast that shall dwell in Ashdod. God says that. Adolf Hitler 
know that. Yes, there it is. So the so-called Jews are imposters. Go back to the writing against us so they can see it. Adolf Hitler showing documentary film of the real Jews being black. Man. This is amazing. I'm shocked. I would need a break. I'm sorry. Read it again. In one segment of a Nazi instructional film writer, the genetic heritage, go back, the genetic heritage of the Jews is purportedly traced to Oriental Negro. Oriental Naga. Oriental Nagas. Oriental Nagas, huh? The mysterious Oriental leader, Prester John. All <laughs> praise for why. Stay up. Suda. Choose up.